Aristotle's approach to understanding the universe was grounded in empirical observation. He believed that knowledge should be based on what we can perceive through our senses, on the evidence that the world presents to us. He meticulously studied the movements of celestial bodies, noting their patterns and regularities. The sun, for example, rose in the east and set in the west each day, a consistent and predictable phenomenon. The stars, too, followed fixed paths across the night sky, their positions relative to one another unchanging. These observations led Aristotle to conclude that the universe must be organized and structured. The celestial bodies, he reasoned, could not be moving randomly. There had to be an underlying order, a set of principles governing their behavior. His observations also suggested that the Earth was stationary. If Earth were moving, he argued, we would observe a phenomenon called parallax, a shift in the apparent positions of stars as Earth moved through space. Aristotle, however, did not observe any parallax, leading him to believe that Earth must be fixed at the center of the universe. His conclusions, while ultimately incorrect, were based on the best available evidence at the time. His emphasis on observation and logical reasoning laid the foundation for the scientific method, a systematic approach to understanding the natural world that would revolutionize our understanding of the universe. The geocentric model, with Earth at its heart, was more than just a scientific theory for Aristotle. It was a reflection of his philosophical worldview. He believed that Earth was the most important place in the universe, the realm of change and imperfection, while the heavens were the realm of perfection and eternity. The celestial spheres, made of the incorruptible ether, moved in perfect circles, symbolizing the eternal and unchanging nature of the heavens. Earth, in contrast, was subject to the constant flux of growth, decay and transformation. It was the realm of the four elements, earth, water, air and fire. These elements, unlike the ether, were subject to change and interaction, giving rise to the diversity and complexity of the terrestrial world. Aristotle's geocentric model placed Earth at the center not only physically but also metaphysically, reflecting its central role in the grand scheme of existence. This model, while intuitively appealing and consistent with observations at the time, would eventually be challenged and overturned. The seeds of this revolution were sown by astronomers who began to notice discrepancies between Aristotle's model and their own observations. These discrepancies would lead to a paradigm shift a fundamental change in our understanding of the universe and our place within it. Aristotle's celestial spheres were more than just abstract concepts. They were envisioned as real physical entities. Each sphere was thought to be made of a crystalline substance, perfectly transparent and perpetually rotating. The stars were embedded within these spheres, carried along in their celestial dance. The planets, too, were attached to their own spheres, their movements more complex than those of the stars. To account for the observed motions of the planets, which sometimes appeared to move backward in the sky, Aristotle introduced the concept of epicycles. An epicycle was a smaller circle, whose center moved along the circumference of a larger circle called the deferent. This complex system of circles within circles allowed Aristotle to explain the seemingly erratic movements of the planets while maintaining the perfection of circular motion. The celestial spheres, with their intricate movements, were a testament to Aristotle's belief in the order and harmony of the universe. They represented a cosmic ballet, a symphony of motion governed by mathematical precision. This vision of the cosmos, while aesthetically pleasing, would eventually be replaced by a more accurate and elegant model, one that dispensed with the need for epicycles and deference. The prime mover, setting the universe in motion. Aristotle's universe was not a static entity, it was a universe in perpetual motion. But what was the source of this motion? What set the celestial spheres spinning, driving the cosmic ballet? Aristotle's answer was the prime mover, a concept rooted in his metaphysics. The prime mover was an unmoved mover, a being of pure actuality and perfection that existed outside the physical universe. According to Aristotle, the prime mover did not interact directly with the universe, but it exerted a kind of cosmic attraction, a pull that set the outermost sphere in motion. This motion was then transmitted inward from sphere to sphere, setting the entire universe in motion. 
The Prime Mover was not a god in the traditional sense, it was a philosophical concept, a way of explaining the ultimate source of motion and change in the universe. The concept of the Prime Mover reflects Aristotle's belief in teleology, the idea that everything in nature has a purpose, a goal towards which it strives. The Prime Mover, as the ultimate source of motion, set the universe in motion towards its ultimate end, the realization of its inherent potential. This teleological view of the universe would have a profound influence on Western thought, shaping our understanding of nature and our place within it. How about a telescope? Modern tools in ancient hands. Aristotle with the telescope. Let's imagine for a moment transporting Aristotle from his time to the present day. Imagine handing him a telescope, a tool that allows us to peer deep into the cosmos, revealing wonders that Aristotle could never have dreamed of. How would he react to the sight of Saturn's rings, a swirling disk of ice and rock encircling a giant planet? How would he explain the craters on the moon, evidence of a violent and dynamic past? Aristotle, with his emphasis on observation and logical reasoning, would undoubtedly be captivated by these discoveries. The telescope would reveal a universe far more complex and intricate than he had ever imagined. The celestial spheres, once thought to be perfect and unchanging, would be revealed as dynamic entities subject to the forces of gravity and motion. The planets, once seen as ethereal orbs, would be revealed as worlds in their own right, each with its own unique features and characteristics. Aristotle's geocentric model, once the cornerstone of his cosmology, would crumble in the face of these new observations. The telescope would reveal that Earth is not the centre of the universe, but rather a planet orbiting the Sun, just one of many worlds in a vast and expanding cosmos. This realisation would force Aristotle to confront his preconceived notions, to adapt his understanding of the universe to accommodate the new evidence. Cosmic Revelations Aristotle confronts modern discoveries. The revelations wouldn't stop with the telescope, Imagine introducing Aristotle to the Hubble Space Telescope, a true marvel of engineering that allows us to peer billions of years into the past, capturing breathtaking images of galaxies forming, stars being born and dying. Show him the cosmic microwave background radiation, the faint afterglow of the Big Bang, evidence that our universe had a beginning, a moment of creation. These discoveries would fundamentally challenge the very foundation of Aristotle's cosmology. His belief in an eternal and unchanging universe would be shattered by the evidence of a universe in constant flux, expanding and evolving over billions of years. The prime mover, once considered the ultimate source of motion, would become an unnecessary concept in a universe governed by the laws of physics. Aristotle, however, was a man of reason and intellect. He would not cling to outdated ideas in the face of overwhelming evidence. He would adapt, revise his theories, and embrace this new understanding of the cosmos. He would marvel at the vastness and complexity of the universe. Recognizing that his own model, while groundbreaking in its time, was but a stepping stone to a more complete and accurate understanding. A paradigm shift from geocentrism to heliocentrism. The transition from Aristotle's geocentric model to the heliocentric model, with the Sun at the centre of the solar system, was a gradual process, a culmination of observations, calculations and theoretical insights. Astronomers like Copernicus, Kepler and Galileo played pivotal roles in this paradigm shift, challenging the long-held belief in Earth's centrality. Copernicus proposed a heliocentric model, arguing that Earth and the other planets revolved around the Sun. Kepler, through meticulous analysis of planetary observations, discovered that planets move in elliptical orbits, not perfect circles as Aristotle had believed. Galileo, using his telescope, observed the phases of Venus, a phenomenon that could only be explained if Venus orbited the Sun, not Earth. These discoveries, piece by piece, dismantled the foundations of Aristotle's cosmology, replacing it with a more accurate and elegant model. The heliocentric model, however, was not merely a scientific triumph, it was a philosophical revolution. It dethroned Earth from its privileged position at the centre of the universe, relegating it to the status of just another planet orbiting the Sun. This realisation had profound implications for our understanding of our place in the cosmos. 
forcing us to confront our own insignificance in the grand scheme of things. Aristotle's impact on scientific thought. Despite the eventual overthrow of his geocentric model, Aristotle's legacy in the realm of science remains profound. His emphasis on observation, logical reasoning and the search for underlying principles laid the groundwork for the scientific method. His belief that the universe was governed by natural laws, not the whims of gods, paved the way for a rational and empirical approach to understanding the natural world. Aristotle's contributions extended beyond cosmology. He made significant contributions to biology, physics, ethics and politics, his works influencing generations of thinkers across disciplines. His emphasis on systematic observation and classification laid the foundation for the biological sciences. His ideas about motion and change, while ultimately superseded by Newtonian physics, stimulated centuries of scientific inquiry. Aristotle's enduring legacy lies not in the specific details of his geocentric model, but in his approach to understanding the universe. He taught us to observe, to question, to seek explanations grounded in reason and evidence. His influence can be seen in the work of scientists throughout history. From Galileo to Einstein, who, while building on and sometimes contradicting Aristotle's ideas, inherited his spirit of inquiry and his thirst for knowledge. Conclusion, the evolution of cosmic understanding. Our understanding of the universe is a journey, a continuous process of discovery, refinement and revision. Aristotle's geocentric model, while ultimately incorrect, was a landmark achievement in its time, a testament to his powers of observation and logical deduction. It served as a stepping stone, a foundation upon which later astronomers built, refining and expanding our cosmic perspective. The transition from geocentrism to heliocentrism was a paradigm shift, a fundamental change in our understanding of the universe and our place within it. It was a triumph of human reason, a testament to our ability to question, to challenge established ideas, and to embrace new discoveries, even when they challenge our preconceived notions. As we continue to explore the cosmos, aided by ever more powerful tools and technologies, we can be sure that our understanding of the universe will continue to evolve.